let's focus on the ileum for now. So the most time-tested and the simplest urinary diversion is called an ileal conduit. What basically happens is the surgeon harvests a portion of this ileum, disconnects it from the rest of the bowel, and then reconnects the small bowel back together. So now you have a portion that's not connected to this to the small bowel anymore. And we use this um, as a conduit for urine to leave the body. Okay, so this is um, this is what's called an ileal conduit. This is um, basically just a small piece of the small bowel that's connected to the ureters, right, like this, and the tip of this is brought out as a stoma. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to show you what that looks like on the outside of the body, okay? So, so on the outside, you have it here. So, you know, let's say this was an open cystectomy, um, robotic open that, you know, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, probably matters very little how it's done, but if that's the incision, the, um, the tip of that, ileal conduit is um, is here. It's it comes out as as a stoma nipple that comes out sort of right right to, to the right, generally to the right of uh, the person's belly button because the distal ileum lives sort of in the right portion of uh, of your body. So it's it's just uh, easier track for it to be brought out here. So generally, ileal conduits are uh, there's a few exceptions, but generally they're here. They're in the kind of right lower quadrant, what we call. Um, and obviously, this diversion requires an appliance, okay? And what I tell folks is when they wake up from the surgery, they have a, they have a drain. The drain is kind of a, um, a window into the, into the a bowel sac there to make sure that everything is healing well. Just while we're on this picture here, there are also diversion stents that patients wake up with. And these diversion stents... Uh, generally come out of the stoma like this, okay, like little two uh, pieces of uh, cooked spaghetti. And these are generally removed about a week to, two, to three weeks after surgery, depending on surgical preference and sort of specifics of the case. But what these do, I'll show you these in a minute. Um, they basically help the ureters, the tubes, heal to the uh, ileal conduit, okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to the other image here. And let me get the uh, cystectomy stamp back uh, back on, which is right here. And the ileal conduit looks like this. So these tubes that I just showed you, they basically, they go from the kidney. The surgeon puts them in from the kidney. They go through the ureter. They go, they, they transverse the anastomosis, which is a fancy way to describe a connection. The anastomosis is the connection between the urinary tract and the gastrointestinal tract. Um, and uh, they come out of the body. So, you, you know, two, and they come out like this. So I showed you the stoma on the other image. This is why patients wake up with, uh, with these two little straws coming out of their stoma. And, again, these are removed about, um, um, it's, you know, one to three weeks, again, depending on the particulars of the case uh, after surgery. Now, one of the dreaded, you know, just jumping ahead, talking a little bit about the complications, and we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a, more in a minute. But one of the dreaded problems with with these uh, surgeries is this connection. You were connecting the urinary tract to the gastrointestinal tract, and you know, in five to fifteen percent of patients, depending on whose series you look at, these connections stricture, and they they um, uh, they basically close down with time. It's a very frustrating problem because everything is going well, and all of a sudden, patient gets uh, an infection or a fever, and um, or they um, or just incidentally they um, get a scan, and you can see the kidney what's called being hydronephrotic, having a uh, having a dilation. The urine can't get out, and the kidney swells, so the kidney can sort of deteriorate over time if that's left without um, a fix. And so what's generally done is first a nephrostomy to this place, or the tube that goes from the kidney, uh, to, uh, from the skin to the kidney. Um, and then 
that generally done in radiology, um, that that stent that the patient had in the beginning is exchanged. The tube from the back is exchanged back into the stent. And this can be sort of uh, a frustrating process because patients have to come back into the hospital, get antibiotics. Once the stent is in, there's a few options. Some patients just choose to have the stent changed every few months. Uh, but sometimes, um, you know, uh, dilation is attempted in, in, radi in radiology. And sometimes the surgeon has to go back in and fix it. Very frustrating problem both for the surgeon and the patient and uh, you know, just one of these realities of this very complex surgery where we're taking the urinary tract and connecting it to the gastrointestinal tract. Um, we'll talk a little bit about sort of uh, other issues that can come up with this surgery, but, um, you know, that's one that's, um, you know, that everybody tries to avoid and uh, is very frustrating when this happens. Um, so let's go back and talk about sort of the other options that we have. So, the ileal conduit that I showed you is sort of the, again, the most time tested, um, the the simplest. It's the least time of the, on the on the operating room table, the least time to heal, and the least complications. Now, obviously, the downside of um, of having a ileal conduit urinary diversion is um, is having to live with a urostomy bag. Now, I'll tell you that um, the quality of life that folks can have with the urostomy bag is extremely high. The goal is really to get people back to their lives. I tell my patients they can, you know, scuba dive and skydive with that bag. And, you know, um, I'm not sure if anybody's really scuba dived with it, but I definitely have patients that uh, go regularly swimming in the pool with these urostomy bags and really live very, very full lives. And actually, you know, we're going to talk about the continent urinary diversion. When surgeons first started doing them, we're really... Um, everybody felt that that was a much superior diversion um, in terms of quality of life. But when you ask folks, you know, that, um, who live with, with an ileal conduit um, versus a, you know, neobladder or, or uh, you know, another incontinent urinary diversion and ask them uh, some quality of life questions, it was very hard to tell the difference between the quality of life that one has with an ileal conduit versus a neobladder. And I'll be honest with you, the, the da those data taught us that actually um, the, the sense of disappointment that people have with their choice is actually higher with neobladders and continent urinary diversions because we think probably those were just, you know, for lack of a better term, oversold to them. I mean, they're, they're good diversions, and some people do incredibly well with neobladders, and for some folks, those that's the best choice, but I think people need to go into those diversions with their eyes open and know that there are still challenges with the continent diversion. 